Witam Państwa bardzo serdecznie. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another panel. Green conservatism. I'm going to discuss the topic with Jakub Wiech, an expert on energy, defense24.pl, and author. Welcome, editor. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Before we talk about the details of green conservatism, let's define it. How do you understand the notion? Green conservatism is what I see as an emergency exit for uh, right-wingers. An emergency exit for those who, in the last dozen of years, talked something, said, were saying things about the climate that came out not to be true. A lot of commentators, uh, publicists in the right say about uh, cl the climate things that have uh, uh, no reference to the future, to the reality. Like, for example, the fact that there is a change, a shift in narration, narration from a climate change to uh, from global warming to climate change. There's no shift. These are two separate notions. We're talking and in uh, uh, global warming and about a, a an increase in temperatures, which is 1.5 Celsius compared to 1850 by reference. While climate change is much wider in its scope, it means changes of a number of extreme weather phenomena, uh, the disappearance, uh, gradual disappearance of seasons, the blurring of uh, limits between seasons, rather. And reports uh, uh, on this uh, are published by IPCC, the International Panel on Climate Change. So there has been no shift in narration, but maybe in uh, publicists. It might seem to commentators that there has been a shift, but indeed there are significant changes in the climate. So what about uh, the green conservatism? You said it's an emergency exit for parts of uh, the right um, leaning politicians, how do you see that? If we look at right wing thought in terms of climate, which I am one of, I see myself as a green conservatives. We moved um, from the position of um, uh, denying climate change to moderate denial along the lines that the climate might be changing, but we don't know if it's caused by man or not. So, repeating this, we created this situation in which the right is seen as having nothing to offer um, in the field of fight against climate change. And this means really giving up on one of the main issues of the public debate. If we look at what's going on in Glasgow and Brussels, decisions are made that will be decisive for uh, the years and decades to come because in Glasgow the discussion is uh, uh, running about 2100, the year uh, 2100. So the right moving out of the field in the dis this discussion, we leave field to the left. So there's ever more talk about utopian ideas, leftist ideas, degrowth, etc. Things that lead to transforming the economy with eradication of key elements of uh, market economy. And it means a move towards completely hostile to the right, hostile areas. But it's our fault because we've had nothing to offer so far. So this whole discussion and the content 
Content-wise, uh, when we hear about ecology, green transition, uh, climate protection, it seems to be very ideologic um, and not necessarily content-related. Let's separate between the sphere of proven climate change, which is uh, scientific and there is no room for ideology, with a which is a dictator of proof. Just let me give you an example. In 1979, Exxon, one of the biggest oil companies in the world, employed climatologists to prepare models that um, calculated the reaction of the Earth's physics to the increasing concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere. It took them three years to prepare the model that perfectly reflects the increase of average temperatures in respect uh, to uh, the increase of CO2 in the air. So that was once again in the 80s, uh, and it was commissioned by an oil uh, uh, corporation. What did Exxon do about that? They hid the report. It was made confidential. It was internal. It was leaked only in 2015, if I'm not, if I'm correct. In the meantime, Exxon funded think tanks and uh, publicists who were supposed to blur knowledge about climate. So. Um, Exxon, knowing what was happening uh, to the climate, invested their money in hiding the truth. This is very sad. There is no ideology there. Ideology starts when uh, we comes into play when we start talking about uh, climate policy, because policy is prepared in order to execute one's uh, best interest. No country introduces such a um, policy in order to reduce the concentration of uh, uh, CO2. Now let's take uh, Germany, which does something uh, absolutely unreasonable, and that is they close down nuclear plants, which are zero emission, and instead they build gas plants well, because they have cheap gas thanks to Nord Stream 2. And what they're doing is they're putting pressure on other countries in Europe to uh, do the same thing. We've seen a report, a uh, German report, on a uh, alleged uh, a possible a failure in a Polish nuclear uh, uh, nuclear plant, without uh, with the assumption that there would be no basic uh, basic uh, safety precautions, uh, and uh, Germans do that in order to sell gas in Europe. This has nothing to do with climate protection, and has a lot to do with building the German sphere of influence in Europe and using the opportunity of Nord Stream 2 and climate policy. But this requires a counter proposal, and such is not there. Climate protection, which you're talking about, has that become a uh, portmanteau for um, promoting our own interests? Because if we uh, separate facts from fiction and what Brussels is saying, we come to the conclusion that we should eat less meat and use less cars, and uh, it would be best if uh, humans weren't there at all. And it's difficult not to think it you know, boils down to some kind of uh, own interest. Depopulation is not one of the policies imposed by the EU. Uh, but if we look at Fit for 55, for that matter, we will see that there is a very tense negotiation game. If we take the proposal of the Commission um, regarding private cars, that is, after 2035, there will be it will be impossible to register new uh, cars with traditional combustion engines. I don't think that. Uh, the German industry, motor industry, would be happy with such a proposition. I think it's a, um, a negotiation a, um, a proposal, a preparation of field for negotiation. This is the so-called door in the face tactics. You. Um, make such a proposal, which is uh, very tough to accept, to prepare your playing field. 
Fit for 55, in any way, in any case, is a, an opportunity to impose solutions that uh, make one uh, country dependent on another. But that's how geopolitics works. So, what should the response be uh, in this ongoing debate? What should be the response taken into account? Uh, the fact that you are a conservative. Well, it should be paired with uh, our current state of knowledge in, uh, in uh, climate uh, matters. We have such knowledge since uh, the sixth report by IPCC is being published. It is a scientific fact that um, climate uh, change is man-made. Let me refer to sources of conservative thought. That is what first conservatives said in the 18th and 19th centuries. The aspect of environmental protection was one of the key thoughts of traditional conservative thought. The first environmental activists were conservatives. They didn't like the fact that man was taken away of, it, of uh, his natural habitat and putting in an industrial habitat. Referring to Roger Scruton or John Token and their work. This brings us closer to the imaginary of green conservatism because we um, might talk of all kinds of policies in transportation, energy, and others. The transition that is taking place is very wise, very broad. It's not about whether we're moving away uh, from coal or not. Now it's a discussion about methane and whether in 2040 we are still going to use uh, natural gas or not. We are operating in a certain abstract, and I don't want to go into the details because that would take too much time to explain all that. Green conservatism is an attempt at keeping the values and institutions we care about, protecting them against the impact of the ideologies that are trafficked as an ideology of environmental protection. In this discussion, the Rhine should be the host of the discussion about uh, climate. OK, mm, drawing towards the end of this discussion, uh, should ecology be conservative? I think that ecology is conservative, although some conservatives do not agree. How do we change that then? Well, that's uh, a very relevant question. I've been asking it myself uh, for a year now, and but it's very difficult to do. It requires admitting that we were wrong, which is not easy for many. Like I said, it's an emergency exit, and this conservatism requires, green conservatism requires admitting we were wrong, and so that we can build a new position countering what we are hearing in the climate debate as of today. Thank you. Let's conclude with that. Let's see which way the Polish right goes. Yeah, Jakub Wiech, author and analyst of Defense24.pl, has talked to me about green conservatism. Thank you very much.